Hey guys, okay, welcome. My name is Andrea Mitchell and this is our new ambassador training which we do every Monday night. A different leader leads um, each Monday and um, tonight is mine and I wanted to kind of go back to some basics. If you are new and watching this in a live or in a recording or um, months down the road, I want this to be applicable to you um, but I wanted to kind of um, take you back to the basics and kind of to the beginning. So I've been an ambassador for almost five years. The end of November, it'll be five years that I have been an ambassador with Plexus. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, getting started with this, um, why I even do this crazy thing, what I even thought was a good idea. And um, and then I just hope that a little bit of my story and a little bit of stories of our other leaders um, resonate with you, connect, um, it gives you a little bit of understanding of what we do. First thing I want to tell you is that I decided to do this, no makeup, no earrings, hair up, um, sitting, I'm actually sitting upstairs in my guest room. I didn't want to sit in my office. Um, I wanted you to realize that this is how we started. We started um, all of our calls, all of our team trainings, everything just us. It was just, um, sounds so silly and so movie cliche, but just a girl sitting in front of a computer talking to her friends. Um, I didn't um, start out trying to run a team or host team calls or do anything um, spectacular. Um, I seriously just wanted um, to get information I had and had been gathering out to my team or to my friends. Um, so you are getting it completely raw, Mascara still underneath the eyes, um, leftover eyeliner, and um, I'm sure some of my girlfriends will make fun of me, um, but I just wanted to give you um, an idea that you do not have to dress up, get fancy, um, have all the right words um, to do this business. Y'all, I still write notes five years later. Um, I want you to understand that you can sit on a really badly upholstered chaise lounge in your guest bedroom and nobody cares as long as you're willing to share with them what you know. And that goes for products and it goes for the business side of what we do as well. Okay. So I'm not going to read a lot of this, but I am going to kind of reference my notes because I did take some time to kind of think through. So most of us got started just to help with weight loss or health issues. So we did not get started to be business builders. Um, I think all of us would say that we didn't have time to do this. And um, if you had told me five years ago right now that I was going to sign up for this in a month and I was going to end up having a massive career that was going to be our only income and we're going to end up building and buying a house, um, closing on the house completely with my income, um, and that um, for two years, my husband would be without a job and my income would carry us, I would have told you you're crazy. And I didn't want that. And no, thank you. And next, I, I this is not what I wanted. I was a stay-at-home mom. I loved being a stay-at-home mom. We had a comfortable life. I loved our house. Um, our life was good. And um, I didn't need anything else on my plate. Um, my kids were seven, five, seven? How, how long am I? Yes, seven, five, and three. Um, our oldest is handicapped. She has cerebral palsy. And so she is um, difficult, but my boys were, you know, crazy and rambunctious too. I was volunteering at church. I was volunteering at school as a room mom. Um, I just did not have room for this in my life, but this didn't start out as this. So if you have kids, you understand. And if you have multiple kids, I always love the question. People go, oh my gosh, three kids, how do you do it? I'm like, well, I got one at a time. So I got one, I figured out how to deal with her, and then you kind of add another one, and then it's not quite as crazy, and then you add a third one, and you just kind of keep doing what you're doing, just growing it bigger. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I felt like this business was the same way. I kind of started out here, and then I kind of added some team members, and before I knew it, they had added some people, but it wasn't like I went from zero to triplets. <laughs> I, st I started out with one at a time. Um, and, it, and it went at my pace. If I had at any point not been ready for it, I could have really pulled back. Um, and I didn't because I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. So um, I'm going to probably get off track. I'm going to try to stay on track. So most of us, when we started, didn't even have the energy to do this. Isn't that funny? Like we started 
really with the products to gain the energy we ended up using to run this business. <laughs> but I could not have done what I do right now five years ago, um, pre-products, because I, there's no way my body would have functioned to do this. Um, so it's kind of interesting how Plexus has allowed our bodies to function at an optimal level that allows us to actually do this business and run our houses and have kids and do all the other things. Um, so my very first point is, if this is not what you're starting, if this is not what you're starting to, um, to achieve, you're not trying to be the top of this business, you're not trying um, to earn you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis, um, you're not looking for big, huge trips and incentives. Here's another side note. I could not have taken these trips five years ago. Uh, my husband and I had just started taking trips and leaving our children behind. Um, our daughter had just stopped having seizures a year and a half before I started Plexus. Um, and we were still kind of in that trial phase of trying to figure it out. So it took us almost a year um, after starting Plexus to even be able to go on a trip. Um, so that wasn't on our list. That was not on our list of things. We were like, oh, let's travel. Like, we still have three small children, like just traveling all the time isn't feasible. So I don't want you to feel like it's all of this or nothing. Um, it really is um, how, whatever you want to make it. I want to give you that, um, that freedom tonight to not feel like you have to go all in, like pedal to the metal. But I do want you to know what's possible if you choose to do that. Um, so next point is we wanted to cover what we were spending nothing more. Most of us just wanted to cover $150 a month of products, maybe a little bit more. My daughter and I were both taking a lot of products, so ours was probably a little bit more than that. Um, but most leaders in our company just wanted to get back in a paycheck what we were spending on products. And so whatever that number looks like for you, make that your first goal. Like just say, I don't want to run a business with this. I don't want anything giant and huge, and I don't want to do team calls, and I don't want to do all these things but I do want to at least get a paycheck every month for what I'm spending. And that's where I think something like these videos on Monday nights, these calls, the team pages will really help you that just start there. Um, so the making a lot of money came later. Um, as we found more friends that really wanted to cover the cost of their products too. It's kind of amazing how that becomes like, I wanted to cover the cost of my products, so I found a few friends to do this with me. They wanted to co cover the cost of their products, so they found friends to do that with them. And before you knew it, we have 5,000 active people on our team. We have 20,000 people on the team, but some, you know, buy one month and not another month. So we have about 5,000 on a monthly basis that are active on just my team alone that I get paid on. Um, so it's a really big, amazing team. Okay, next point. Make sure I can read my own handwriting. We just shared. We were excited. We wanted to tell others. Um, we had very little expectations of what our friends um, would like or not like. We didn't really know. Um, we just wanted our friends to try it. And I was talking to a leader tonight, and she said, I just, tons of my friends just bought trial packs. They just started with something. They just wanted to see what the pink drink tasted like. They just wanted to try a month of probiotics. Um, maybe they just want to try lean and that's it. Um, start them somewhere. You don't have to start the way that you started. You don't have to start with a huge line of products. You can start somebody anywhere because for most of us, that's what we did. I started as a customer, as a customer for five months and I was just a slim and accelerator customer. Um, then I found out those products were working really, really well. And we added probiotic bio cleanse, which is our magnesium and our multivitamin. Um, so you can start someone anywhere, um, and help them just figure out what the products do and don't do if they like them, if they're willing to try them or take them every day and then grow from there. Everything doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, so I really like that. Okay. So here are my, were my, were a lot of our goals in the beginning, no goals, except to make maybe $150 a month, no knowledge of ranks and no expectation of ranks. No, like, what does that rank mean? And what, how do I get there? We didn't really care. We just did kind of the little things every day that ended up adding up to ranking and ranking was great because you get bonused. 
and then no care about incentives. So although our company offers great incentives and you're going to really want to pay attention if this entices you at all, I am an incentives girl. So I don't know about you, but incentives, dangle a carrot, anything, and, and I'm in. I will, I'll go for it excuse me, if hiccups, not everybody is that way. And so if incentives don't incentivize you, that's okay. Maybe just helping other people get connected with these products is all you need. Maybe just covering the cost of them so your husband doesn't ask questions is all you want. Start somewhere. I have a feeling if you start there, you'll figure out where you want it to go. Um, okay, and we had no idea at all what all the vocabulary meant. Good gravy. Even when we were talking tonight, I heard people say, well, I didn't want to go to, you know, and they would list a rank. And I'm like, they aren't going to know what that even means. It doesn't matter at this point. In my first couple of months, it didn't matter that I couldn't keep straight what the next rank was or what the ultimate ranks were going to be. Who cares? As long as I was sharing the products and getting people to try it, sign up as a customer or an ambassador, however they felt comfortable, that's all that really mattered in the beginning. Okay, so what changed? First, we made between $100 and $1,000 in our first few months each month. I made $1,200 in my first month, not even really trying, just really having fun. And I think a lot of our leaders started with a couple of hundred dollars in their first month and thought, if I try a little harder, could this increase just a little bit more? And when each month it was you know, increasing 10% or double, depending on what their months were looking and their effort was looking like, it became like, hmm, what if I did just a little bit more? And every month when they added a little bit more effort, their check grew just a little bit more. Second, people were actually trying it and liking it. And the products were actually working for people. And it, it's the weirdest thing. When you know the products worked for you, but when you hear someone else verbalize that they worked for them, that you helped get them set up, you're like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm supposed to be sharing. And, and I kind of want that more. I want that again. And the more we did that, the more people we shared with, the more people they shared with, it just worked and it just grew. And then lastly, I would say we developed a community, a community that talked about the what ifs in this business. Like it's, it's my favorite part. What if, what if the products really do work? What if your mom, it's lupus, symptoms go away? What if your daughter um, can go to the bathroom on her own every day? What if your kids um, don't get the flu this year? What if your allergy you know, symptoms um, start to diminish? What if you don't have to run to the bathroom after you eat a meal? What if you can build a house that's handicap accessible for your daughter? What if you can pay for a car um, through your bonuses in your company? What if um, you can go to Hawaii with your husband for five years in a row. And I will say that those what ifs have all become a reality for us. And so when you develop a community of people that all share the what ifs and then realize they start to come to fruition as they work really hard, it's kind of incredible. And so that's what changed. The what ifs became possibilities. And then I wanted to share with you some things that we thought we would do differently. So the first thing is tell everyone what we're doing. Um, one thing that I think every leader in our company would say is there's at least a handful, if not more, people that had we shared with in the beginning, had we not been fearful, had we not heard negative thoughts in our own heads, they would be on our teams and we would be getting to do those what if conversations with them. But a lot of times when we wait too long, a lot of times when we um, let fears creep in or we let negative mindset take hold and root um, in our minds, it, um, it slows us down. Um, imagine going through a forest and all of a sudden you hear sounds and you, you know that there's something good on the other side, but you're so terrified of all the things that you think might be happening that you, over, you don't even get through it because you're like, you know what, I'm going back because all these things, but they're all in your head. Nothing's actually happened. Um, I really think sometimes with this business, what happens in between your ears is more terrifying than whatever actually happens. Any of the messages you actually get, any of the conversations you actually have, the ones you've had between your ears are probably the worst ones that will happen. Um, so telling 
everybody and not being fearful of the responses. Um, and then the next thing that we would uh, have done differently is started sharing before having knowledge. And so this is a learn as you go kind of business. Um, I still four years later or five years later, um, I'm still learning so much about our products and our business and our industry. And if I had waited until I understood all of it before I started sharing, I feel I'd still be waiting and this team wouldn't exist. And 20,000 people might not have ever gotten to be a part of this business or these products. So I think that if you're willing to say, I don't know, let me go find out. Um, you can start today. You can share with anybody. You can share on Facebook, on social media, over the phone, in an email, um, at Bible study tomorrow morning. You can share if you're willing to say, I don't know, let me find out. And I promise you, y'all, those are the key words in my business to this day. I don't know, but I bet I can go find out. And I can. And if you're on this team, you can find out too, because there are people that will help you. Our entire team is set up, designed, and eager to help you find those answers. Okay, uh, one more, or two more. The first one is to stay attractive um, and not throw up info that we have. It tends to be feast or famine. Either we say nothing or we say everything that we know. Um, there's a middle ground of just um, dripping information, of being excited and putting just enough out there to get other people excited, but not so much that they're having to read a novel every day. Um, you can be really attractive in this business and it not feel salesy. Because believe me, y'all, I'm not a salesperson. I'm just a sharer. I will share anything that I love. Um, and so you can do that in an attractive way. And I think there's a lot of people that from the beginning, they wish they had been more attractive and less um, vomity of information. And, and I definitely would say that, that was a huge mistake. It'll come. A huge mistake that I made, but you know what? I got over it because I kept going. Instead of hearing that negative about how bad all of my posts were in the beginning, instead of letting that stop me and turn me around, I was like, all right, gonna do it better on the next step, and the next step I did better, and the next step I did better. And getting through that forest of fears um, to, the, to the point where um, I no longer could hear them or see them because I knew what I was doing was more important than what um, the fears that I had. And then the very last point I want to make is that realize that you do have an audience and influence. You do have people in your life. It may not, you may not feel like you have thousands of people or even hundreds of people that you can influence, but I promise you have more than you think you do. Every single leader on my team would probably say when they started out, they had a list of about five, maybe 10 people that they thought might buy any products from them. I'm telling you this. I stood in my kitchen and listed five names off to my husband and thought that was about my stretch. Um, and look at where we are now. Because it's not about your inner circle. It's not about your closest friends or your dearest family. Uh, it's about the people you've met along the way in life. It's about the acquaintances. It's about the girlfriend in high school. It's about the mom at your kid's school. Um, it's about the girl that you sit next to in Sunday school at church. Um, it's about um, the friend that you drop your kids off to after football practice. It's, it's those people that um, will at some point need to feel better, have more energy, lose a little bit of baby weight, have more resistance to sugar, um, Golly, a myriad of things that our products do. Want amazing, clean skincare, easy skincare like our Joyome that I'm obsessed with. Um, those are the people in your life that you'll share Plexus with. And maybe not the first round. Maybe the first round they go, hmm. Maybe about round 10 or goodness gracious, for me, five years later, I still have friends, a friend right now messaging me saying, I have thought about this year after year and every year it goes by, I see, you know, you doing this and I want in and I just don't know how to do it now. Well, girl, it's your time. When it's their time, you want to be standing there ready with open arms to welcome them and show them how to sign up to be a customer, how to sign up to be an ambassador, um, how to do the same thing, how to cover the cost of their own products by just sharing with a couple of friends. And it just goes from there. So it's a ripple effect. 
are you willing to throw your stone into the lake and see what kind of ripples um, you can create? And maybe it's not the first rock. Maybe you have to learn how to throw it correctly. Maybe you have to learn where to throw it correctly or which lake to throw it into. But either way, I promise if you work really hard at this, and by really hard, maybe 30 minutes a day, you can create an amazing ripple effect. It's like a legacy of health, of um, income, and of life-changing um, opportunity. So I hope this helps just a little bit. Break it down and get you started right where you are, in your guest room, sitting on an ugly chaise lounge, no makeup on. It doesn't matter. I would challenge you to get started today. Y'all have a really good night.